Start your day the Eden way. Your perfect morning begins with Eden tea. Let every sip accompany your devotion, bringing peace and refreshment to your soul. Brewed with care by the makers of Eden Tea, supporting your mornings every step of the way. A very good morning to you and a very good, blessed week to you. Welcome to the Family Devotion where the scriptures come alive as we discuss matters from the Bible and discover why the Bible matters. This is yet another day that the Lord has made and you and I ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Yes, so long as God has given us breath and has granted us this day, we ought to rejoice and be glad. Where are you tuned in from? Where are you watching or listening to us from? We would love to hear from you. 20316 is our SMS line. 0786 316 316 is our WhatsApp line. And as usual, our mornings have started very well with Eden Tea. And yes, we invite you to join us so that we may have our morning something to look forward to with Eden Tea. And so whatever it is that you fancy, whatever flavor it is that you crave, Eden Tea has you all covered. If it is that classic black tea that you would love, if it is, you know, that kick of ginger warmth, if it is the unique notes of purple tea, whatever it is that you're looking for, Eden Tea has you covered. And so begin your journey today with Eden Tea by visiting top select supermarkets across the country or visiting www.carirana.co.ke and you will begin your journey with Eden Tea. Tea. You can be sure, with every sip of Eden tea, you're guaranteed to find consistency, quality, and taste that's just uniquely crafted for you. Yes, beautiful. Now, this week we begin another conversation. This week we are talking about a reasonable faith. Does Christianity make sense? Is Christianity reasonable? Well, this week we will be having a series of conversations around this subject. And today we are making a case for reason. Yes, that's our subject for today, a case for reason. And we are looking forward to the conversation that we will have. Our guest is already here, and I will introduce him immediately after I read this psalm. We get to pray and then start this conversation. This is Psalm 14. Psalm 14. Psalm 14 says this from verse 1 to verse 4. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They do abominable deeds. There is none who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on the children of man to see if there are any who understand, who seek after God. They have all turned aside. Together they have become corrupt. There is none who does good, not even one. Listen to that verse, verse 1. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. And so I am just wondering, when Christians are called fools for believing, who really is the fool here? Well, I guess this week as we continue in this conversation, we will find out more. But for now, let us pray and then get right to this conversation. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you and we honor you. We praise your name for granting us yet another day, yet another week, in order that we may rejoice and be glad in it and bring glory and honor to your name. We ask that it will please you, Lord, to speak to us, to minister to us, that it will please you to showcase your power and majesty to us, O God, that it will please you, gracious Redeemer, to glorify yourself through our lives. Lord, I pray for every person that is tuned in, every person that is listening or watching, as we begin a new week, Jehovah God, we begin the week with a different feelings. Some, oh God, are beginning the week in celebration for the great and amazing things that have happened in their lives. And you tell us if there is anyone that is happy, they ought to sing songs of praise. But some are beginning their weeks in trouble, Jehovah God. Perhaps somebody was, uh, you know, laid down, uh, you know, just at the end of the week. Somebody is beginning the week wondering, yet another week, I do not have something to do with my hands. Somebody is beginning the week, oh Lord, and still their health is in dire situation or the health of a loved one. Somebody is beginning the week and that that relationship is still on the rocks. Somebody is beginning the week still with mental anguish and they're wondering, is there hope 
Is there no balm of Gilead? We ask in the mighty name of Jesus that, Lord, even as we continue to just open your word, because your word is alive and active, you will minister hope and healing to many, that somebody will still have a sense that God still cares, that God still loves, that God indeed is compassionate. So we commit all those that are tuned in, O God, and the various burdens that we come bearing, even as we begin this week, asking, Lord, won't you look upon us with mercy? Won't you look upon us with favor? Won't you look upon us, King Jesus, with eyes of compassion? We thank you for family media and this privilege that you continue to grant us, Lord, to keep you, Lord Jesus, on the airwaves. We thank you for our partners that continue to journey alongside us by their prayer and their financial giving. We ask and pray, would your blessing be upon each and every one of them, and may none of them lose their reward. And now, Lord, we ask, would you speak? Would you speak? Even as we listen from your servant, would you help us indeed to make a case for reason, because Christianity is a reasonable faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, our guest this morning is the chairperson for Apologetics Kenya. Well, he will be telling us what apologetics really is. And yes, he's here with us so that we may have a week long of just making sense of our faith. His name is Mr. Chege, and he's here in order to help us dig more into this conversation. I will allow him to introduce himself so that we may continue this conversation. But before I switch over to him, let me invite you to kindly share with us your comments, your feedback, your questions. 20316 is our SMS line. 0786316316 is our WhatsApp line. If somebody asked you, why do you believe in Jesus? Why do you do what you do as a Christian? What reasonable answer would you give them? Please do engage with us by sending us your comments and your feedback. But for now, welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, what an honor and a privilege it is to have you with us. Uh, it's a joy. Yeah. Uh, I am very honored to be here mm. and even to just be discussing issues around reasonable faith yes yeah all right so just help us then um you know a, a good number of the audience are meeting you for the first time so by way of introduction just help us appreciate who mr chege is yeah thank you uh, so my name is chege mwangi i like to go by that name mm. or you can call me mark if you have to yeah <laughs> and i'm born again um so currently i am the chair at apologetics kenya now apologetics kenya is a ministry mm that is interested in the engagement of culture and faith, mm. or rather the confluence of faith and culture. Mm -hmm. How does your faith, or the things that you believe, how do they influence the things that are around you? Mm. And so we want to think of ourselves as people who are both spiritual in the sense that we love God, mm but also people who are thinking about what it means to be spiritual. Yeah. I, I, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So we, we want to have both, that mm -hmm. you are spiritual in the sense that you're prayerful, you know, you love God, you're studying your scriptures, mm. but you're also putting your thought into it, that mm. you do not divorce your mind yes. from your faith. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Um, now, let's just, by way of beginning, mm -hmm. um, I know some that are tuned into this conversation. Yeah. The term apologetics is, is, is not a foreign term to them, mm -hmm. but there are perhaps some that are tuned in and they're wondering, apologize? You mean we mm -hmm. need to apologize as Christians? Yeah, we have done many <laughs> bad things. <laughs> yeah, so just help us by way of beginning this yeah. conversation to appreciate what is apologetics really? Yeah, and that's a good question. Now, apologetics is not a apologizing. Mm -hmm. um, apologetics, actually, it comes from a Greek word. Yeah. It's, it's those things where sometimes Christians want to be fancy with yeah. names. Yeah. So it comes from the Greek word, the apologia. Mm. Now, apologia just means a defense. Yeah. So, and really it came from the idea of a courtroom. If you are in a courtroom and you are accused of something, mm. then you give an apologia. 
a defense uh-huh. for you know you're defending yourself that I didn't do this or I did for yeah. some certain reason you know mm. and the, and the, then the the English then has just borrowed the word apologia mm. and in English it is apologetics mm. so in Christian apologetics we are trying to give a defense we are trying to give a reason we are trying to communicate effectively mm. Why we believe the things we believe. Yeah. So you can imagine yourself as in a court of law and you're being asked, why do you believe? Mm. And you're giving a what? An a apologia. Yes. That's apologetics. Ah, yes. I like it. Mm. I like it. So one of the passages that we'll be looking at um, this morning and then even as you, you know, help us appreciate other Our passages. Yes. Um, it's First Peter. One Peter. Yeah. First mm. Peter chapter uh, 3 verse 15 correct um, and even as we as we do that mm. one of the statements I want you to make a comment on a statement that we make as Christians I don't mm. know if you've had that mm. uh, comment um, in the morning there's um, you know a devotional that I sent to a WhatsApp group that we are in for the family devotion mm. and, and it hit me that mm. there's a statement that we make mm. uh, the line between faith and foolishness is mm. very thin it's very thin and then it hit me that's not a biblical statement. I know. I know. In fact, in fact, and it's good you say that, mm. one of the interesting things, I think locally, mm. is that our understanding of faith is very skewed. Mm. Because we think of faith as that thing that you believe completely contrary to the evidence. Mm. So if, if I wake up today and I think I can fly and yeah. stand on top of a building, <laughs> I am having more faith if I stand there and really, 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 really believe that it is possible. Mm. And hence, you hear people saying that the line between faith and foolishness mm. is very thin. But scripturally speaking, mm. the line between faith and foolishness. It's like what God says, you know, as far as the East is from the West. Yes. Because faith is not believing in darkness. Mm. Faith is having trust in somebody who's trustworthy. Aha. Okay. Well, so faith is putting your trust in mm. something that has been proven to be true. Yeah. When you take your medicine, mm. You have faith mm -hmm. in its ability to yeah. heal. Yeah. But you don't go and start taking that and <laughs> saying that will heal me. You only take that that has been proven mm. to be working. Yeah. And therefore, when we have faith in God, mm. it is because we know that he is trustworthy. Yeah. So we are not following God blindly. At You know this God. <laughs> why? Why? I mean, God has said this. It is because he is trustworthy. Yeah. We have, he has a proven track record. Mm. We know him. Mm. And so even when he leads where we don't know, mm. we are following because we have faith in him. Aha, yes. The, the way I like to put it is this way. Abraham, mm -hmm. you know we talk about Abraham yes. as a father of faith. Yes. Abraham would not have been a father of faith if when he was called, he went to South Africa. Mm. You know? Yeah. He is a man of faith because he obeyed and went where God was leading. Mm -hmm. When God says that you will have a son, it was faith when he believed. Mm. But it was not faith if he woke up one day and said, I will have a son. It's not faith. Ah. <laughs> it is when he believed. And the Bible tells us that Abraham believed and it was credited to him as righteousness. As righteousness. Yeah. Why? He believed in. God. God. I like that. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now, first Peter. One Peter. Yes. Chapter three, verse 15. But in your hearts, mm. honor Christ the Lord as holy, mm. always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason mm. for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness mm. and mm. Respect. respect. Now, today we are talking about a case for reason. Mm. Give us a case for reason. So, Let's begin here, yes. because 1 Peter 3.15 is the go-to verse for every apologist, and they know that. Yes. And sometimes I think we miss the meat of whatever 1 Peter 3.15 is talking about. Mm. Now, let's think of uh, first uh, context, and mm. the first simple questions to ask, who's writing? Uh -huh. mm. So 1 Peter 3.15 is written by Peter, the apostle. Mm. Now, what we miss about Peter the Apostle is that he was a fisherman. Mm. 
Yeah. By training. Mm. He was not a doctor. He's not like Paul. He's not a theologian. Yeah. He's a fisherman. And yet, he gives the counsel to say, but sanctify... Oh, and then maybe before I get there is, who is he writing to? Mm -hmm. He's writing to the church in the diaspora, or the diaspora, depending on yeah. how you pronounce it. <laughs> yeah. And so he's writing to every believer. Mm. He's not writing to some intellectual, some theologian sitting mm. somewhere or anyone. He's writing to the ordinary day person, the fisherman, the yeah. doctor, the driver, the teacher, mm. the radio host. Yes. You know, <laughs> he's writing to all of us and he's saying, but do what? In your heart, sanctify Christ as Lord. Why? Now, he was writing to them, the context was that they were suffering. Mm. It was, and you, if you read up there, he will tell them, well, it is of no value to suffer for doing wrong. Yeah. But if you suffer for doing good, mm, you're, blessed. you're blessed. And when you do that, then sanctify Christ as Lord in your heart. Mm. And then do what? Be ready to give an answer mm. to anyone who asks. Yes. So he is saying because of your actions, mm. because of your willingness to suffer for the gospel, because of your choice to go against the current of what is mm. happening, mm. people will ask questions. Yeah. People will have a question on you. Why do you, I mean, why would you be willing to treat somebody well when they have done evil to you? Mm -hmm. And then you will be what? You will be ready. Yeah. Now, again, notice, you are not ready when you are being asked. <laughs> you are ready before. You are ready before. Yes. You are always prepared. Mm. And therefore, notice he doesn't say, when they ask you, pray for them. It is okay to pray for them. Yeah. It is good. But he says, be ready to give an answer. Be ready to give a defense. Mm. Be ready to give a reason mm. for the hope that you have in Christ. That's the reason I am doing this mm -hmm. is because of Christ. Yeah. And of course, now that can be permutated to mm. depending on the complexity of your yeah. questioner. Yeah. So if someone is asking then how can you believe in a God, be ready mm. to give a reason why you believe that there is a, a God. God. Yeah. There's somebody who will ask you a question on suffering. Mm. Be ready to give a reason why you still believe in God in spite of suffering. the suffering. Yeah. So don't be, and I think sometimes we Christians do that, we can wish away questions. Mm. And somebody is asking you, why do you believe in God? This is spiritual warfare. Yeah. <laughs> now, <laughs> the question is spiritual warfare. <laughs> I know. So, yes, in a sense, it is always spiritual warfare. Mm. But be ready. Mm. Have an answer. Mm. You know, be, have an answer as to why you actually believe what you believe. Mm. So that's, what, that's the idea of 1 Peter 3.15. Yeah. And then he finishes there by saying, but do it with gentleness and respect. Yeah. Yes. Don't mm. go bombarding people and mm. hitting people with arrogance. Mm. Mm. That's not the Christian way. Yeah. You do it with gentleness and respect. Respect the other worldview. Respect yeah. that every person is coming from somewhere, mm. but be willing to give an answer. Yeah. For the hope that yeah. you have. Yes. One of the things I think um, maybe you've interacted with it a bit more mm. in your field. Mm is um, sometimes it feels like uh, I, am, I am becoming unfaithful. Yeah. I am lacking faith. Mm. Even when now as an individual, let mm. alone somebody asking me a question, mm. when as an individual certain questions start cropping uh, in my mind, in your mind yes. and I want to banish them because I'm like, yeah. ah, you know, this is, this is a lack of faith. Just speak into, into that space. Yes. Now, it's the question of doubt. To, mm. to, to, the ex to what extent is doubt reasonable? Uh -huh. And how, how much doubt can a Christian have? Mm. And, and I have to first empathize with everyone because s some of these experiences are real. Mm. It, you don't just wake up and begin doubting your yep. faith. You yep. probably have had an experience, mm. a difficulty or something, or you... you, you in a sense, you're not feeling as if this Christianity is working mm. for you anymore. Mm. So, and I think the important thing when you think about even in the scripture, God invites us in. Mm -hmm. He does not push us away. Yeah. In fact, I think it is, and I need not to be wrong here. I don't know whether it is Isaiah or mm. in one come, of the let prophets. Come, let us reason yes. together. He invites and says, come, mm. let's reason together. Yeah. God does not chase people away because they are struggling 
with the truth. Mm. The wrong doubt is the one that doubts God. Uh -huh. If you doubt God's ability, now he says, you know, I think it is in, in Hebrews, he mm. says that... Uh, um, I think it's James it, chapter 1. Mm. And when you pray for wisdom, do mm. not doubt, yes. accepting that you will receive anything. Yeah. And Hebrews also does mention, Hebrews 11, 6, yes. without faith it is impossible, impossible to, to please That's God. That's the one I was looking yeah. for. It's impossible to please God. But the one who, who comes to him must believe that he is, mm. and he is the rewarder of those, those who, who diligently, diligently seek him. him. Yeah. Notice, mm. those who diligently seek, seek him. him. So when we have doubts, when we are struggling, we can struggle to find where is God. Why is God? Now, those are inviting questions. Mm. But when we doubt God himself and uh -huh. his ability, now we have moved from having doubts about the faith to doubting God. And that's where mm. I think God draws the line. So we have an opportunity to struggle with God. Yeah. And the men of faith did that. You will find in the Psalms, David mm. is struggling with God. Mm. Sometimes Job struggles with him. Mm. You find the prophets. Elijah. That's true. Elijah has just come from destroying 400 guys, you know. Mm. And then he says, I want to die. <laughs> it's I mean, too much. <laughs> this is too much. Yeah. And you know why? Jezebel, I just told him, tomorrow you are not going to yeah. see that. You'll be like one of them. Yes. Mm. Eh. He and you would on. imagine that Elijah was a man of faith, the guy mm. who stopped rain mm. for three years, mm. and then again prays and it rains. But even he has experienced, and that is normal for a Christian in their walk with God. There are times you will struggle with your mm. faith, mm. and yet, and this is now where yeah. apologetics is very useful, mm. in those times when we struggle in our hearts, mm. sometimes what we know in our minds can help. Yeah. Because even when I don't feel like I'm connecting with God, mm. I know mm. that God is. Yeah. I know that God is not moved by my struggles. Mm. I know that my circumstances are not, influ you know, do not influence who God is. Yeah. So even when I'm struggling in my heart, my mind is mm. alive. Yeah. Mm. In fact, uh, and maybe I could just raise this. Yeah. One of the other scriptures to think about mm -hmm. when thinking about apologetics yeah. is Mark chapter 12, mm. verses 30. Mm -hmm. If you were to just read Mark 12, 30, it's Mark a verse 12, that we 30. all know. Yeah. Okay. And, and Jesus is being asked, mm. you know, he's having that tussle with the Pharisees, the yeah. Pharisees. And at some point they ask him, um, what is the greatest commandment? Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Of course, they had their reasons. They were yeah. trying to trap him. Okay, but Jesus says, and he's quoting Deuteronomy six. Mm. He says that you shall love the Lord your God mm -hmm. with all your heart. Mm. That's where he begins, isn't yeah. it? And then with all your soul, mm -hmm. with all your mind, mm. and with all your strength. strength. And then, and then he says, and the second one is just like it: you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And there's no other greater commandment than than this. Than this. Now, when you think about Christian life, it is very easy for people to love God with their hearts. Mm. I mean, we love him. Yeah. You find people praying, they are mm. weeping. Mm. Because we connect with God that way. Mm. There's also a sense in which we love him with our souls and strength. Yeah. You go out of your way, you are singing in praise and worship, you are helping the poor, mm. you, I mean, you're going for cashers. Mm. Our we are sold out. Yeah. Our strength, I mean, we consume everything we have because of our love for God. But most of the time, loving God with our minds mm -hmm. is completely lost to many of yeah. us. And, and you know, we don't connect to Jesus as a thinker. We do not connect to God as one who uses his faculties of thought. And yet, Jesus is telling us that to love God mm. means you will love him with your heart, mm -hmm. with your soul, with your strength, and with your mind. Yeah. In other words, a spiritual person is a thinking person. Aha. Yes. I like that. Yeah. A spiritual person is a thinking person. Yeah. Yes. So yes. if you if you if you <laughs> if you put your mind away, yeah. Then you're not really spiritual. You're not being fully spiritual. Yeah. I mean, yeah. If 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 your mind is not involved mm. in the things that you're doing. Because then you're not loving God fully. Yes. I like that. Mm. Just I uh, mentioned mm. because mm. I want us to listen to a song and, mm. and as we process all this, mm. 
and, and it's sad that we have to mention this, mm. the Shakahola tragedy. Ah, uh, yeah. I, is that a case of failing to love God with our minds? Yes. I mean, and this is a perfect example. Mm. Because you know, I mean, think about the people yeah. in Shakahola. Mm. They loved God with their hearts. Mm. They wanted to see Jesus, mm. you know. They, and they loved him with their strength. They were willing to forego their food, their everything, because they wanted to see Jesus. Yeah. And yet, their mind faculties mm. are not involved. Somebody should just have asked, mm. why is the guy who is telling us to fast mm -hmm. to see Jesus, why is he eating? Doesn't he want to see Jesus? I know. Why is he, why, why are we, why is he leading us to, mm. uh, into a path that he has not chartered himself? Yeah. You yeah. know, if he, I mean, if he was fast, fasting and we are in the same boat, mm. yeah, we can, you know. Yeah. But this guy, he seems to be inviting us into a path he's not mm. taken. But more importantly, does God invite us to follow him in that way, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Is, is, is Christianity an invitation to spend yourself just to prove? And you know, you read Colossians. Mm -hmm. Don't be carried away by asceticism yeah. and worldly philosophies, mm -hmm. you know? And that is what we are saying. Yeah. You, you don't just hear something and, hey, yeah. you are... Because rejoiced. it sounds spiritual. I know. Mm. You, people are coming nowadays with, you know, I have a new revelation. Mm. Huh? Something mm. that the rest of you have not had. Mm. You need to connect with it. And then you ask yourself, where did he get it from? Yeah. Huh? If he didn't mine it from the scriptures, mm. where did he get it from? Yeah. And if he got it from the scripture, you can also get it for yourself. I need to be able to. Exactly. Yeah. Now that's what we are talking about, involving your mind. Mm. In fact, sometimes I like to think about it. When you think of the armor of God, mm. and this is just me thinking about yeah. it. We don't have to be very exegetical mm. on it. Armor of God, it talks about, the, you know, the belt, belt of, of truth, truth. Yeah. you know, breastplate of righteousness. righteousness. But what is the helmet? Of salvation. Yeah, salvation won. Uh -huh. In the head. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want us to listen to this song even as we continue this conversation. Wow, what a conversation we are having this morning as we have a conversation this entire week on a reasonable faith. And today, specifically, as we talk about a case for reason. Yes, we are making a case uh, for reason. Kindly do engage with us. We'd love to hear from you. And this is the question that I am asking. If somebody asked you, wait a minute, why do you believe in the things that you believe? Why do you do the things that you do as a Christian? What reason or reasons would you give them? Please do engage with us. 20316 is our SMS line. 0786316316 is our WhatsApp line. We'd love to hear from you. But for Start your day the Eden way. Your perfect morning begins with Eden tea. Let every sip accompany your devotion, bringing peace and refreshment to your soul. Brewed with care by the makers of Eden tea, supporting your mornings every step of the way. Welcome back. I'm leaning on Jesus. Yes, and that is our aim today and this entire week, that you would learn to lean on Jesus. And not neglecting your mental faculties, but with your mental faculties, fully leaning on Jesus. Well, this is the family devotion where the scriptures come alive as we discuss matters from the Bible and discover why the Bible matters. And as usual, we are having our devotion this morning as we get a warm cup of Eden tea. Oh, it's almost over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is how uh, sweet it has been. And so we invite you to make your morning something to look forward to with Eden tea. And so feel free to visit www.karirana.co.ke to just get a feel of how this tea is produced, but also for more details that you will need to require. Or visit top select supermarkets across the country and begin your journey today with Eden tea. Well, some of your comments are coming in. Thank you. Thank you very much for those that are um, sending in your comments. Would love to continue hearing from you. If somebody asked you a question, why do you believe in what you believe? Why do you do the things that you do? What would you say to them? What would be your response um, to them? Mr. John Gidanga tuned in um, from Nakuru Karibu Sana. Welcome, sir. Gertrude from Parklands. Thank God it's Monday. Yes, we thank God that it is Monday. Evelyn, we see that question. Evelyn is asking, what about 
a certain false prophet that you're claiming people are worshipping. Well, that is why we are talking about reason. Yes, and we will not mention names in this particular show, but our aim is to equip you and to arm you so that you are able to distinguish truth from error, falsehood from that which accords to the teaching on godliness. Well, somebody saying, wow, I love the topic for today. Somebody loves this conversation. Tuned in and getting uh, blessed. Akisa, thank you for that. Um, somebody else is saying, great, insightful conversation. Um, sorry, I'm not able to get. Yes, great, insightful conversation. But on Shakahola, brethren, you appear to blame the victims. Not a word on Mackenzie and other predator ministers who pry on innocent David from Parklands. I think that would be a good, uh, mm. because we do not want to appear that we are victim shaming or yeah. victim blaming, yeah. as, as you know, that yeah. would appear. Please, let's respond to, to David. Yeah. Are we really necessarily blaming the victims? No, actually it is. It's, he's one of those students who read before the teacher. Because <laughs> <laughs> that is the next phase we were going to. Yes. Remember, we've done First Peter 3.15. Mm -hmm. We've done Mark 12.30. Mm. So the next one we want to do is Jude. Aha. Jude. Uh, and if you go to Jude, yes. from verse... Uh, now, if you ask Jude chapter what, we can't help you. <laughs> it only has one chapter. <laughs> yeah, Jude from yeah. verse 3 mm. to 4. Yeah. Uh, if you could just mm -hmm. read for All us. All right. So mm. this is Jude from verse 3 to 4. Mm. Beloved, although I was very eager to write to you about our common salvation... I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain people have crept in unnoticed who long ago were designated for this condemnation. Ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into sensuality and deny our only master and Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, now. Now think about what Jude is saying. Mm. You know, Jude, now those who don't know, Jude would have been one of the leaders in the church mm. in Jerusalem. Yeah. At least he's the brother of Jesus that yeah. we know. And Jude writing to the church and he tells them that, you know, I was very eager. Mm -hmm. In fact, what I'd really want to write to you is about our common salvation. Yeah. I'd want us to share in the joy of knowing that you're walking with the Lord, the beauties of, you know, sharing in the same faith. But then he says, but I found it more important mm. to write to you to do what? To, to contend, contend for mm. the faith. Why? Mm. Because there are men who have crept in in stealth, they have crept in unnoticed, mm. and they pervert the grace that the, the Lord has given us yeah. for their own advantage. And, you know, and they deny the Lord our God. Mm. And when you think about Shakahola now in its full yes. entirety, yeah. there's a part where mm. people are not exercising their minds, yeah. but there's also a large part where there are people who have come in to mm. lie to God's people, yeah. and they take advantage mm. of brethren. Yeah. And that is Mackenzie, mm. that people sometimes looking for financial gain, looking for power, looking for control, mm. they can actually take advantage. Yeah. Sometimes even especially advantage of the poor. Mm. That's true. You know, people who are looking for hope, mm. people who are looking for something to cling on, you know. And there are people who come in and take advantage of the rest. Mm. And when you think about it, it is not just in Shakahola. Mm. It is practically everywhere yeah. that all of us are probably one step away from being taken advantage of. That's true. Yes, that there are people who are peddling gospels mm. here. Some of them are taking advantage of others. Some of them are forcing people. You hear somebody is selling everything to bring. Yeah, to the pastor. To the pastor, mm. you know. Mm. Go sell your land mm. and bring it. Mm. Now, the only person who seems to be advancing is the pastor mm. and not everybody else. Yeah. Now, these are people who are actually taking advantage yeah. of brethren. Mm. So that they have taken something beautiful like giving yeah. that the Lord teaches. An, an opportunity for people to share in the blessings of the Lord, mm. you know. Yeah. And you use that to... To take advantage of people and yeah. use them. Yeah. And therefore apologetics comes in here to help us contend for the faith. Mm. That we are out there helping people to discern mm. this truth. I, I think it was, I don't know, our sister was talking about a cult leader, yes. you know? Yes, yes. Somebody who is 
teaching people things that sound almost true. Mm. You know, they are just almost true. Yeah. But they are not fully true. Yeah. And so for an undiscerning person, you listen, you're like, but the Bible says give. Mm. The Bible says, you know, do yeah, this. Fast. Yes. Mm. The Bible says this. So then, what is the problem? Mm. But you see, you need discernment. Yeah. You need discernment. And that's mm. why we are contending for the faith. Yeah. We are fighting for it because we know that mm. people are being taken advantage of. Yeah. People are suffering out here mm. because of wrong doctrines yeah. and wrong truths. Yeah. So we, we want to, and I think we want to teach it as a whole. Yes. We want to say that you are responsible mm. in the sense that you have to engage your mind, mm. but we also appreciate that there are people mm. out there who have gone out to yeah. take advantage of others, mm. who, use, who use people's circumstances to their advantage. Mm. Because sometimes when somebody is in a difficult state, they're yeah. vulnerable. Yeah, that's true. You know, mm. they're vulnerable. And so when I come and give you false hope, mm. all you need to do to change your circumstances is sow a 1,000 shillings Mm. Seed. Maybe that's the only money you have between mm. you and poverty. And then you give it all away. You give it all away. And then you do not mm. receive the blessing. You and don't. actually what mm. happens is mm. then mm. you end up even doubting God now. Exactly. Wow. Because even your sufferings increase. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Just because somebody crept in and noticed. And noticed. Yeah. Notice they crept in in stealth. They mm. don't come shouting, hey, I'm a false teacher. Yeah. Nobody does that. Mm. They creep in in stealth. Mm. They come looking very nice. Mm. They sound very nice. They sound sophisticated. They care about you. Mm. When you listen to them, you're like, yes, this guy is connecting mm. with my problems. Yeah. But at the back of their mind, I mean, at the back there, they are taking advantage mm. of you. Yeah, so... Wow. So that's, that's part of mm. what apologetics yeah. is involved yeah. in. Yes. Wow. Mm. Well, David, mm. I hope that answers it. Mm. Yeah, mm. indeed, we need to contend. Mm. We need to contend. Mr. Bernard Simu, thank you. A very good morning to you mm. as well. Um, somebody else here is saying, let me see, let me see if I'll be able to, um, to draw this. Uh, good morning. This is the best biblical insight I've ever had. Indeed, it's important to apply your mind even as you have faith in what is being preached to you. I love where our guest says, when they come with new revelations, mm. ask where they got it from. That's mm. an eye opener. True. Beautiful. Mm. Beautiful. Ask where mm. they got mm. it from mm. so that you can also get it there yeah. you yourself say. as well. Let me just read perhaps one more and then we can um, get back to this conversation. Um, okay, somebody saying, morning. Well, I have an atheist neighbor. I often engage him in conversations about God's existence. And by extension, I defend my faith using God's mm. word. Thank you. Thank you, Wandia. Uh, Wandia Gathu, thank you for that. Um, good morning. Praise the Lord. Nice watching from Makueni County. You're asking for prayers. Indeed, we'll be praying at the end. May the Lord come through for you in your financial situation. May the Lord remember you. All right, so let's get back then to this conversation. Even as you continue sending in your comments, your feedback, your questions. Mm. So now we are appreciating just, mm. you know, the need exactly. for reason. For reason. Um, that it is important that we engage our minds as well. Mm. Now, where do we begin? Ah, that's a difficult one. <laughs> but I want to say... yes. We have to begin at the Genesis. Okay. We have to begin here. Yes. Because, and I know sometimes when we want to apply reason and mm. everything, mm. remember what we are defending mm -hmm. is our faith. Mm. And the Lord has revealed and packaged this truth in the scriptures, mm -hmm. you know, so that before you do anything else, before you even study apologetics, before you do, you know, engage, all these things begin with the scriptures. Mm -hmm. I realized that we almost have a scripture deficiency uh -huh. in the church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just ask yourself how many of us have actually read the Bible mm -hmm. from the beginning to the to end. The end. Just Genesis one. to Revelation. Genesis to Revelation. Yeah. What is the Christian message? Mm. What does the Bible talk about? What you find most of the time is we, you know, we pick, we cherry pick verses here. I mean, I read the Psalms, I want encouragement, mm. and it is good. Yeah. I, I read, you know, I, I read uh, the Gospels, I want to know the story of Jesus. Mm. I probably read an, an epistle of Paul, but I read maybe one chapter mm. or a verse that I have, you know. Mm. 
But the gospel story is one story. Genesis to Revelation is God's story. Yeah. And he is revealing himself all the way through, from the beginning, mm. all the way through, I mean, First we have through creation, and then we have the, you know, mm. the, 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 Adam, the guys yeah. he creates first, and then we have the patriarchs of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Mm. You have the children of Israel. It is God still outworking himself to, uh, to get to, to Christ. Yeah. Wasn't it? Mm -hmm. That God is working through history mm. and yeah. leading us to point us to one man. Mm. Who is Jesus Christ? And then now from Matthew, we have the revelation of Jesus yeah. and how Jesus would, and, and how we are to understand this new covenant mm. with him. Mm. So the whole story is one story. So unless you can understand this story fully and in its proper context, you probably have not begun the defense of the faith. Uh -huh. Yes. Because what are you defending? Yes. You might find that you are defending your own things. <laughs> you know, sometimes you can be discussing with a person, yeah. you are defending your position, but it's not biblical. Mm. It's, it's not what the Bible says. I mean, yeah. and, and when we say the Bible says, it's not as straightforward as the Bible says X. You have to ask, what is the whole meat mm. of the scripture around yeah. this topic? Not just one verse. Not just one verse. Mm. You, you don't go and pick one verse and you say, and he said to him, go hang yourself. And therefore, <laughs> from now on, the Lord is inviting us. You know, we don't do that. Yeah. No, but we do that for other things without asking, what does the whole corpus of scripture mm. teach? Yeah. So that's the beginning point. Mm, mm. But as we study the scriptures, and now as, as we aim to study the scriptures, then we can move on yeah. to study. Mm. We study, for example, what others have written around this uh -huh. topic. Yeah. Mm. Because we also want to appreciate that we are not alone, mm. that other people have thought about these things. Yeah and they have packaged them maybe in books mm. or in other ways. Mm. Then we can also consult, seek for trainings. Um, I mean, we have, and I think there are people who have been called to specialize in some of these things. Yeah. You have pastors, you have, uh, you have apologists. Yeah. Yes. So mm. I think you want to build there from beginning from saying, let's first begin with God, yeah. God has revealed. Mm. Because you will realize that a lot of the questions actually revolve around the scriptures. Mm. The scriptures mm. seem to have covered practically yeah. everything. Yeah. So if you just understand the scripture, mm. you are 90% mm. on your way home. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Mm. Uh, now, I, perhaps you have heard of uh, people like um, this, mm. um, but somebody who perhaps had a Christian foundation, mm. maybe grew up in a Christian home. Yes. Um, and then they went to school, mm. <laughs> you know, went to the university, perhaps advanced beyond that. And then mm. at some point they said, um, you know, I got enlightened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and therefore, I can no longer continue, you know, being this foolish, <laughs> believing. What, what is your response to people like those? Um, mm. Because we are making a case for no, reason. For reason, today. yes. Yeah. And I think, and I think the, the answer here is multifaceted. Mm. Let me begin by saying... Number one, and I should have mentioned this as we were talking about why apologetics. Mm. Part of it is, unless the gospel is understood at a worldview level, yeah. it cannot really be effective. Mm. Now, what do I mean by that? Because I feel like I have used a big <laughs> word there. Yeah. A worldview is a lens. Mm. It's, 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 it's the spectacles through which you view the world. Mm. That your understanding of how things work... Yeah is influenced by the way you see them. Mm. Now, unless the gospel or what you believe has that lens of a Christian worldview, mm. that is that the spectacles allows you to understand and see the world yeah. through a Christian lens, yeah. sometimes you might be a Christian, mm. but you are not living as a Christian. Mm -hmm. And so you find that many of us growing up you ask somebody, so how did you get saved? Oh, I was born in a Christian home. Yeah. I was taken to church. You know, all those things. But you were never taught how to think like a Christian mm. about life. Okay. So you are a professing Christian who lives like an atheist. Oh. Mm -hmm. You see? 
Aha. So when you get to advanced, you know, maybe you've gotten to campus, you are now studying, you are thinking about life, mm. then you realize this thing does not work. Because after all, it has never worked anyway. Mm. Because your belief is Christian, but your practice is atheist. Is atheist. Yeah. In fact, it could be somewhere pointing to what we did as our devotion. The mm -hmm. fool says in his heart, there is no God. There is no God. Yeah. It is not the atheist that the psalmist is really talking about. Mm. It is that guy who, even while thinking that he's Christian, lives life as if there is no God. Mm. Now, I'm not saying that people are fools. Please yeah. understand me. Mm. I wouldn't want even the listener to think, <laughs> who jama? This guy has just called us a fool. <laughs> That's not yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. What I am saying is, Part of Christian growth is learning how to think like a Christian mm. about life. Yeah. And so unless that happens, it is possible that as you grow and learn mm. and you become what they say enlightened, mm. at some point it will stop working for you mm -hmm. because you will think, wow. Well, because, for example, yeah. if you are taught believe in God because he is able to change your life, and change your life here means you will get some money. Yeah. Materially, Materially you, will you will prosper, you yeah. know. So you get to, I mean, you get to campus, you get to work, and you realize there are people who are more prosperous than you. Mm. And they don't, don't even believe. They don't believe in God. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they make more money than you. Mm. They live better lives than you. Mm. So why do I need this God? Yeah. In fact, if I wasn't a Christian, maybe I would be doing better. Mm. So why should I believe? Yeah. And then you go back and you see the people who are telling you to be Christians and that the Lord will change their lives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, how is, you know? Mm. But you see, unless you understand what changing your life means at a worldview uh -huh. level, mm. you cannot, you cannot, you, you, you yeah. can't really be a Christian. Mm. Another one I like to give as an example is, again, Matthew 6.33. Uh -huh. Seek ye first. Yes. The kingdom of the, God. The kingdom of God and his mm. righteousness. Mm. And all these things will be added unto you. Yeah. Now, you might be a Christian who professes that. Mm. But, worldview. Mm. If you come from a poverty worldview, yeah. you will think that Jesus is teaching an economic model. Mm. You will think that Jesus is saying that the way to receive all these other things mm -hmm. is by doing what? Seeking first, seeking his first the kingdom and his and righteousness. His righteousness. Yeah. But that's not what Jesus is teaching. Mm. So you need the lens that allows you to understand what is Jesus actually saying. Mm. Because when you understand that now, you will appreciate that Jesus is not anti-prosperity. You yeah. know, you will prosper. Mm. But that's not what he is teaching here. Mm. He is talking about people who are able to learn how to rely on God yeah. irrespective of their circumstances. Mm. That even the sparrow in the field, mm -hmm. he knows it. Yeah. None of it falls without his knowledge. That's true. Yes. Mm. That's what he's talking about. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Wow. I like that. Mm. I like that. Now, um, as we gear now towards um, sort of a conclusion of, mm. of this conversation for mm. today, and I like just that foundation mm. because now from tomorrow we start getting into specifics we get you into know the does god it. exist yeah. is jesus the only way did yeah. the resurrection even happen, happen? Yeah. um you know um i am just wondering because there are different people that are listening to this mm. you have your your, your your average christians who your average christian who loves the lord mm. and maybe this is you know sort of a light bulb moment mm. um, for them but they're still hesitant, wondering, mm. you know, will this be the beginning mm. of my loss of faith? Ah. That as I engage, you know, um, with my mind, that perhaps there's an affection side ah, of the faith that will be lost. That will be lost. Mm. Or there's somebody else who's been just listening to this conversation and they're just skeptical all through mm. because they know for sure of people who in pursuit um, for, you know, Paul does argue, or rather the scriptures does argue for what is falsely called knowledge, mm. because I think that distinction is important, mm. who, once they went that path, they never got back. Never got back. Uh, and so somebody is like, I am not so sure I want to go that path. Just mm. speak to, like, sort of those different kind of people that are listening or watching this morning. Yeah, and I think the one who has that kind of a worry, mm. it's a legitimate one. Yeah. Again, 
because, in fact, you will find that sometimes it tends to be the case mm. that the people who put a lot of thought into it tend mm. not to be spiritual. Uh -huh. You know, yes. we are thinking Christians, we mm. argue, we have these theological arguments, mm. we sound sophisticated, mm. but if I ask you about your prayer life, uh. if I ask you how you, you know, you read your mm. Bible, mm. not to go and argue, but for mm. your own personal yes. edification, yeah. there's, there's nothing, nothing yeah. there's nothing. Mm. So that is a legitimate fear. Mm. But then remember that the... The failure of one extreme does not make the other extreme right. Uh -huh. Because the other extreme says, you know, let's rely on the Holy Spirit as if the Holy Spirit did not give you a mind. Mm. You know, let's rely on the work of God in our hearts, mm. devoid of these other things. Yeah. What we are looking for is a balance. Uh -huh. And that's what God invites us to do. Mm. We want to walk that gentle tight rope where we are balancing our work with God we want to be prayerful mm. we want to seek the Holy Spirit we want to be in field you know mm. we want to hear God mm. in that sense yeah. and walk with him mm. but we don't want to do that without our minds mm. we want to bring our minds together mm. and we walk that tight rope it's it's yeah. it's, it's it's what Paul does yeah. you know Paul is a thinking man well, that's true you know I mean the arguments that Paul makes in his epistles no other, uh, maybe Jesus mm. has mm. made more sophisticated arguments. Yeah. But Paul, and yet he's a prayerful man. Mm. He says, I have even got to the third, the third, third heaven. heaven yeah. You know, mm. I know of a man. Yeah, and he's speaking of himself. Yes. Mm. So it is not as if the, the scriptures, we find examples of even Peter. Mm. You know, by the way, people think apologize. Think of Peter when they are filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And the guys come and say, you know, Peter, you guys are drunk. Are drunk. Yeah. He says, like, you guys, look, it is yeah. nine o'clock in yes. the morning. Nobody is drunk in the morning. Yeah. That's an argument, isn't mm, it? That's true. But then where does he go next? What you are seeing here is mm -hmm. what was prophesied in Joel. Joel. Uh, so he is moving from the argument and taking us back to the wisdom of Scripture. And that's why Paul then says, and he's asking when he tells the Corinthians that I did not come to you in sophisticated speech, mm -hmm. but I came demonstrating the power of God. Mm -hmm. And then he goes down there and talks about how, I don't know whether it's down or just before that, where he talks about where he asks where is the philosopher? Aha, uh -huh, of this age. Of this age. Mm. Where is, you know, the mm. sage? Where mm. is the, the rabbi? Because God has made the simple things mm -hmm. of this world or used them to shame the wise. Yeah. Now, how does he do that? Because that's where many people get confused. Mm. They think that God takes the foolishness of the world mm. and uses it <laughs> to shame the wise. That's not what God does. Mm. Now, look at Psalms 19. Yeah. Talks about how the heavens declare, and then talks about how the law of the Lord mm. is perfect, yeah. reviving the soul. the soul. The testimonies of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. simple. So God takes the simple ones, mm -hmm. the ones who depend on him, mm. and then wisdoms them. He grants them wisdom so that their wisdom mm. confounds the wisdom of the philosopher. Aha. So it is not the foolishness of Christianity. <laughs> yeah. It is that God and wisdoms us. Mm. He gives us his wisdom because he tells us that the, the, the wisdom of men, mm. where it ends, is yeah. where the foolishness of God, you yeah. know, begins. Yeah. So God has wisdom. And that wisdom he imparts on his people mm. so that it confounds. Yeah. It confounds even the wise. Mm. So that Paul, and I will finish here. Mm. Paul, Acts 17. You remember when he goes to Athens? Yeah. Athens is the center of mm. knowledge, mm. isn't it? Yeah. Athens are where we had the Stoic mm. and the Episcopalian yeah. philosophers. Yeah. I mean, these guys were thinkers. Mm. In fact, they spent their day thinking, thinking. Yeah. and doing nothing else. And when he goes to the Areopagus, Mars Hill, mm. he goes there and he confounds them. Yeah. He gives them the wisdom mm. of how God has chosen mm. one man. Mm. And look at what happens. So some actually believe some philosophers. Philosophers. Wow. Uh, you know the the level of Kina Plato and yes. Aristotle. Correct. Well, unfortunately, our time is up. But praise be to God because 
this is not the conversation that is ending today. Tomorrow, Tomorrow. we continue this conversation, and I'm really looking forward to that. Amen. Well, and I hope you're also looking forward mm -hmm. to this conversation mm -hmm. throughout this entire mm -hmm. week, because there is much, mm -hmm. there is much for us to actually talk about. Do engage with us, do send your questions, do send your comments, we'd love to engage with you so that we are equipped in order that our faith will be a reasonable faith. Mm -hmm. Allow me to just pray real quick, even as we bring this to a conclusion. Father, we thank you and we bless your name. Thank you because ours is not necessarily a foolish faith as some have purported, but rather a reasonable one. And we are able to give a reason to anyone who asks us for why we hope. So thank you for the equipping we've received today asking, would you help us to love you with our minds as well? In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. amen. Well, just before I go, let me just remind you, as I like to do, that we are able to continue doing this by virtue of partnership with men and women like yourself. And so let me invite you to consider being one of our partners by way of prayer and through financial giving. And so please send an SMS to 20316 with the word partner and somebody will get back to you. But you can also give even now. If you want, you can donate, give a one-time gift if you are able to do that. And so do that through pay bill number 316-316 and for account, kindly write your phone number. And whatever amount you give, God is able to multiply that and use it for his kingdom. But this is goodbye from us. Tomorrow we pick up another controversial topic. Sometimes that as Christians we don't want to engage in. We are looking at the existence of God. Does it make sense? Well, do meet us tomorrow as we have that conversation. But please do not switch off because after this, meet me again for Motivation Monday. We'll be talking about the art of learning. See you tomorrow.